Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin lecturing computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video we're going to learn how to calculate students t-statistic for dependent samples in Excel 2010. Now before we start let's take a look at some data. Over here in columns A and columns B, I've got the test scores for a pre-test and a post-test. So let's say I'm looking to determine if the scores for the post-test are higher than the scores for a pre-test, assuming a, a class or some training has taken place in between. Um, the difference between these scores on the pre-test and post-test is the focus for our exercise here. The participants are being tested more than once and there are two groups of scores. This means that the appropriate test statistic that we want to use is the t-test for dependent or paired means. Over here on my right hand side I've got the formula that we use for paired or independent t-tests. Now it looks like it's a little bit of a mouthful but if you look closely at the test uh, re at the formula, really what we need to be able to do is to calculate d, which is the difference between the two sets of, of, of values, and the value of n, which is the number of observations. So once we know those two values, we should be able to plug those in uh, into our formula and calculate the value for t. So before we start, let's set out our null and alternate hypothesis. So here in blue in the center here in column F, I have my null hypothesis, the HO, and in a paired dependent t-test like this, our a null hypothesis is we, we will say that there is no difference between the means. In other words, mu, the mean of the population for the post-test, is the same as the mean for the pre-test. And our alternate hypothesis, hypothesis, which we are setting out to prove, is that the results for the post-test, the x bar, the mean of the sample for the post-test, is actually greater than the mean of the sample for the pre-test. And our significance level here is going to be 95% significance, or at an alpha value of 0.05. So the way I'm going to work this formula here to work out our value of t is I'm going to calculate and work out the values for each of the components in our formula one by one. So the first and simplest thing to do, we need to know our value for n. Now we can count these manually over on the left hand side. We can see that there's 26 rows of data. We take out the heading that leaves us with 25 pairs of data. But I'm just going to use the count formula, uh, f function here. So I'm going to type in cell g9 equals count and I'm going to select just the values in A, column A here, with my mouse, closing bracket, and that tells us that there are 25 um, pairs of observations in this particular sample. So I'm just using the count in case I ever want to use these data and add in more uh, sample scores. So that's N, and the next thing we need to know is we need to, can see at the top here, our numerator is that we need to sum all the values of D. So we need to now determine D, the difference between the pre and post test. So I've got a column in column C ready for that over here. A uh, simple formula subtract, to subtract one value from the other, so I'm going to type in equals the value in the post-test, and uh, that's in B2, the value of 35, minus the value in the pre-test, uh, in A2, which is a value of 15, and press enter. So the va there's a difference of 20 between the pre- and post-test here. And I'm going to use Excel's autofill function to copy these values down for the rest of the cell. So you can see here that there's a quite a variety of differences between the pre and post test. We can also see in our formula that we need to the value of d squared. So in Excel, it's fairly straightforward to do. Our values of d are in column C, so in, value, in column D, I'm going to put in my values for d squared. So I'll type in here in the first one, equals, select the value in column C, I'm going to use the caret symbol, or the hat symbol, which is the symbol over the number 6 on your keyboard, uh, 2 to square that value, and press enter. So we can see that the square of 20 is uh, 400. And again, I'm going to use Excel's autofill tool to copy that down for all the other values. So now we've got the values for d and the values of d squared for each of the observations. We're now ready to go on and fill in the values for our formula. So the first thing that we need to do is to calculate, for the numerator at the top of our formula, uh, the sum of all the d's. So the sum of all the d's are the values here in column C. So I'm going to use a formula for that. Type in here in cell G10 equals sum, opening bracket, and with my mouse, I'm selecting all the values in column C, not selecting the, the label, of course, uh, closing bracket, and press enter. So the sum of all the d's is 150. We've now got to calculate the sum of all the d squared. So in column D here, um, are all our values for d squared. So we need to sum all of those up. Again, it's a simple sum formula. So type in here in cell G11 equals uh, sum, opening bracket, with my mouse, I'm selecting all the values again, minus the uh, label, closing bracket, and press enter. So the sum of all the d squares is 4,500. Next, we can see in our formula over on the right-hand side here that we need to um, 
uh, multiply the value we've just calculated, sum of all the d squares, by n. So we've already got those two figures over here in our column. So uh, this is going to be just equals our sum of all the d squared, that's a value in g, g11, and multiply that by n, which we have already calculated up here, and press enter. So n times the sum of d squared is 112,500. Our next value is, in our formula, we can see over here on the right-hand side, just highlighting it now, is that we need to get the value, sum of all the d's, and square that value. Now, we've already here, in cell G10, calculated the sum of all the d's, so we just need to square that value. So in my uh, next empty cell here, I'm just going to type in equals, select the value for the sum of d's, 150, use the caret symbol again, and 2 to square that value. So the sum of squares, uh, sum of d, which is 150, squared, is 22,500. Next, we can see in our formula over here on the right-hand side, again, I'm just highlighting the top part of this uh, uh, formula here, is we now need to subtract n times the sum of d squared uh, to take away the sum of d squared away from that. So we've already calculated these two parts here, so it's a simple subtraction formula. So this is going to be equals this value here minus uh, the value we've just calculated and press enter. So the difference between those two is 90,000. Next, we can see in our formula that we've got to divide that by n minus 1. So here, uh, let's uh, do that. So we're going to, going to type in equals the value we've just calculated divided by, and I'm going to put n minus 1 in brackets. We know that n is 25, so I'm just going to use cell referencing again here and select the value for n in G9, and um, minus 1, closing bracket, and press enter. It gives us a value of 3,750. Our final step here is that we need to now take the square root of that value, can see in our formula that we need to do that. So here we're going to type in equals and use the function square root, that's sqrt, opening bracket, and then just select the value above here that we want to get the square root of, closing bracket, and press enter. So we now have for our denominator a value of 61.237. Uh, 61 so we know what our value for our numerator is, the sum of the d's, which is 150. So we've just got to divide this value here in cell g10 by this value here in cell G16. So this is going to be equals G10 divided by G16 and press enter. Now this gives us a T value of 2.449. Now we're not done yet. A couple of more things we need to do. The first is that we need to calculate the degrees of freedom for uh, our sample test here. An impaired uh, T test, a dependent T test like this, our number of degrees of freedom is simply the number of observations minus one. So here in the degrees of freedom uh, a box here, G19, I'm just going to type in equals N, use cell referencing again, which is the value of 25, minus 1, and press enter. And uh, our results in the degrees of freedom here is 24, uh, 25 minus 1, as we would expect. So in our uh, pair dependent t-test sample here, we have 24 degrees of freedom. Finally, let's look and see what all of this means. So I'm going to bring up here um, the t-distribution tables. The, uh, this table here is taken from Wikipedia. And we need to know two things here. We need to know how many degrees of freedom. So that's in our column on the left-hand side. So we know that our value we've just calculated is 24. So if I just um, highlight the values for 24 degrees of freedom, this means that our critical value for on our T distribution is going to be one, one of the values on this line. And we need to select carefully which column it is. It's a one-sided or one-tailed t-test at the alpha value of 0 0.05. So that means if we go across the very top line here, we can see uh, for 95% uh, significance for a one-sided t-test, the values are going to be in the column ben directly beneath the 95% here. So when I uh, cross-section that with our uh, 24 degrees of freedom, we can see that our critical value, I've just highlighted it here on the table, is 1.711. That's our critical value. Back in our t-calculations, we can see that our, our t-test, our t-statistic, has a value of 2.449. This, of course, is greater than the critical value of 1.711. This means it falls into the reject region on the t-distribution. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis that there is no difference between the means in favour of the alternate hypothesis that there is a difference between the means. In fact, that the mean of the post-test is significantly greater at the 95% significance, is significantly greater than the mean of the pretest. So in other words, in our experiment here, um, the training intervention has made a difference to the test scores. So that's how you calculate a t-statistic for a paired or dependent t-test. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.